guys, welcome back to Paul's Workshop. This time, we have a very special episode for you. We're going to make a repair and a restoration of another Virgin Mary statue. So check this one out. You're not going to want to miss it. Well, here it is. This one is a little bit bigger than the one that we restored in the previous episode. And she needs to be cleaned up and painted. But um, the first issue you can see here is the head is broken off. And this one was found on the side of the road, uh, along with the grotto that she goes into. Um, so you can see it's a clean break. And I was trying to think about how I can fix this. And I actually reached out to uh, Scout Crafter, who's usually good at coming up with solutions to these uh, strange repairs. And uh, we had sort of the same idea, and he suggested that we maybe put some type of a mechanical repair, like a fastener, uh, a pin, something like that, into the head, and then drill out a hole, put the pin in here, and cement it. And I think what I came up with was to use a small Tapcon. Now, the Tapcon has the bigger head, which we can put into the to body to make it... Um, you know, drill a bigger hole to put in the body and then fill it in with some cement or mortar and then screw this into the head. For this, I'm going to be using my relatively new Bosch drill here. And this has the ability to uh, to drill, to hammer drill. Again, I'm not going to be doing that setting. I'm going to just be drilling. And I'm going to try to put the, the anchor right in here. Normally with a Tapcon, I just I would just zip it in with a uh, with an impact, but not in this case. So I'm just going to kind of delicately turn it in. Okay, so there it is. So far, so good. So now we need to drill a corresponding hole of a larger diameter into the body. So that's going to be the next endeavor here. Drilling this was a little tough, or shooting this as I was drilling it was a little tough, but here you can see the hole we indexed. I indexed it with a, uh, actually I actually just used a zip tie that I cut just to see if it lined up, and it seems like it lines up. So now I'm going to attempt to go into it with the, with the larger bit. Hopefully all goes well. I test fit everything. I cleaned up the area here, got the dust out. I washed it off and I'm gonna be trying anchoring cement since I have it on hand and it seems like it might do the job. So I'm gonna mix up a small batch. I'm gonna fill the hole with the anchoring cement, maybe get some on here and hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll hold. So here's a little close-up of what we've done. This is going to dry, hopefully. Uh, there's some separation there. It's not perfect. But the front looks decent. Okay, so there it is. Now we're going to let that set up. 
And then you can see there's some things to take care of here, but and that's already good enough to, to put outside if we wanted to. The concrete's had about a week to dry. I wanted to give it lots of time to cure so it's ready for the next step. Uh, let's take a look at how it looks. You can see here, the repair turned out pretty good. We can move, can move it using the head. We wouldn't do that too much because we're not looking for a high strength repair. Uh, there you can see, and that, you know, that seam is gonna be there, but we're gonna do some cleanup and sanding on this. Get the prep work for paint. So, take a good look. I'm gonna do a cleanup on it with soap, water, some scrub brushes. I wanna get in here. I wanna get all of the dirt off. Any loose paint should come off in that step. And then it'll be ready for a light sanding and for paint. So here she is before the washing and the cleaning. The first step was just to give it a <laughs> just to give it a good cleaning with the dry dry brushes. Uh, these are those little scrub brushes you can buy an assortment of them on Amazon or at Harbor Freight. And I switched to a little stiffer um, uh, wire brush, a brass wire brush. So after the dry cleaning is done, I give it. This is just glass cleaner, any all purpose cleaner. I'm gonna get that on, I'm gonna brush it down again, and then we're gonna go with soap and water and wash the whole statue off. We're gonna do a two bucket wash here, just like you would do on your car. I'm gonna have a bu bucket of clean water and a bucket of soapy water, and I'm just using some Dawn detergent mixed with water. I'm gonna wash it down, rinse your rag in clean water, wring it out, get your soapy water, do the same thing. Wash the whole thing down, just like you're washing a car. Here it is out in the daylight. I'm gonna hose it down now, give it a good rinse. Uh, it's a little bit rainy, drizzly out here, so it's a good day actually to do that. And just wanna take a minute, let's take a look at the one we did a couple years ago and see how it's holding up. This is the one we did. Ah, God, it's gotta be close to three years now. And it's doing quite well. You can see it needs to be cleaned off. I'll probably hit it with the hose while I'm out here. But, and this has been out winter, summer, and that's how it looks. Paul's here to help us out. He's gonna do the rinsing and the spraying. So put that on a nice spray, give that a good spray, a good rinse. I soaked it all down, let's wash it real nice. I think the neighbors are going crazy. Don't forget to scrub your butt. <laughs> After giving this much thought, I'm gonna go with a light blue for the outside, for the um, for the robe or the cloak. And there's probably a proper name for that, but. Uh, and then pink, where the white is, I'm gonna go for a pale pink. I saw one um, on, online, and I, I kinda like that combination. So I'm gonna go for a lighter blue with a pale pink, just to make it different than the other one that we have. We always get a lot of questions about what kind of paint we use. This is it, the Valspar Season Plus, the flat exterior. Uh, this one here on the left is a mix that we made with that same paint. I can't remember what I mixed with it, but I like that shade and that's what I'm gonna use to paint the cape, the robe, whatever it is. Take a moment when you're painting here you're getting your this is a nice like a, a semi-wide artist brush just nice even strokes i fill a little bit into those cracks you probably could go over this with a uh, like a plaster or something but don't think that's really necessary 
smooth, even. This is pretty good paint. It doesn't really, uh, you don't really get brush strokes with it. It kind of flattens out nicely. Uh, it's not that expensive. I don't, don't remember the Valspar being that expensive. But, yep, just work your way around. This is a big statue, so it's a little easier to paint maybe than if you had something smaller. But you're going to want to go into your collection of brushes, model brushes, or art brushes if you have them. Yeah, and you're just filling in it. And I will do definitely a second coat over this just to make sure it's all filled. Here's the finished product. I went with a very pale pink. Actually, you can see I need to go and just touch this up on the inside there with some blue. I'm gonna do that right after I make this video. There she is. It needs to dry. Um, here's the, the serpent being squashed. You can see around the back, you can kind of still make out the repair. But you won't see that when it's in the grotto. So there it is. Rescue from the trash. Another one in the, in the can, as they say. Thanks for watching.